places. Who do you think, who would be out to get you, Steve? The truth? Yeah. Mad Dog County. The Sheriff's Department? Kazarik. What's his name? Kazarik. Kazarik. And that's something that he could do. Oh, yeah. Anyone else? Say it's not law enforcement. I get along with everybody. Did she call you on Monday prior to coming over at 2 o'clock? Not just time, no. Okay. She called this number. You had, I think, said that on Halloween you see Miss Halbach walking towards your Uncle Stephen's trailer. Yes. Not too long after that, you leave the house with your bow to go hunting. Yes. As you drove off then to go deer hunting, it's what, 245 or 3, somewhere in that yes. range? Anybody see you uh, yes. as you're going hunting? Who? Scott Toddick. Scott Toddick? Yes. Okay. That morning I was up at my mother's, she had surgery, and then I left her and I went to the woods hunting. I went to my trailer, then I went to the woods hunting. About what time was it that you got out into the woods? About 3 o'clock. Avery's team claims someone else killed Halbach and planted evidence on Avery's property. They say they have new witnesses and evidence. The 46-page document filed today asks the state to grant Avery either an evidentiary hearing or a new trial. What is up, everybody? So we have a copy of Kathleen Zellner's newest filing on behalf of Stephen Avery in an attempt to get him an evidentiary hearing. Greetings, everyone. The state has presented an argument designed to obfuscate the significance of Mr. Avery's powerful new evidence. That Bobby Dassey had the opportunity and is directly connected to actually murdering Teresa Halbach and to planting the forensic evidence to frame Stephen Avery because he was observed pushing Teresa Halbach's vehicle, which contained her blood spattered in the rear cargo area and door onto the Avery salvage yard in the middle of the night, planting it where it would be easily discovered. Mad Dog County Sheriff's Department, this is Carla Canapia. Carla, I, I, I don't know if I, this good information, bad information, who do I talk to about this? Um, the girl that's missing from Hilbert. I can have you speak with my chef commander. Can you hold on a moment? Thank you. Sure. Okay, we are at Avery Salvage. Okay. Okay. And we're searching for the vehicle. Right. For Teresa Hallmark. We have found a RAV4. What color specifically was her RAV4? And do you have a VIN number? Good evening. At a news conference this evening, police announced that they found Teresa Halbach's car and they say they found it on Stephen Avery's property. Uh, very little information is being released. You should probably jump on that right away and, yeah, and, and do something there. And the other person of interest now is this Bobby Dassey. Yeah, that they were talking about in the tent. So. Yeah, and I gave, I gave him phone numbers on that. There's four boys that actually live at that Dassey residence. There are a couple things that I wanted to ask you about. Verify from uh, your statement that you gave us the other day. Oh, I want to just clarify. Yeah. When you got home, the body was colored from hunting already, or was it out? And of course, if, if your yeah, son had nothing to do with it. Yeah, we're probably stuck on that. I mean, well, these are all mixed up. Well, I mean, again, it's, that's why I like to talk. This is your chance to let us know. Motive evidence was established by the defendant's pornography collection. Opportunity was established by the simple fact the victim visited the defendant's neighborhood. Here, Bobby's possession of the victim's vehicle is much more powerful evidence of a direct connection to the murder. The state claims that Dassey's pornography of young females being tortured, mutilated, and otherwise abused is simply too mundane, too vanilla, too boring. You know, to, to me, the, the, 
the Vale CD is significant. Talk about all the imagery that was found, and many had been deleted. But in the fact that Kratzmas held it, and even went so far as calling everything found on Brendan's computer not relevant. Uh, we've gone through this very, very extensively and in a lot of great detail. And uh, someone made the comment, I wonder whether Kathleen Zona is actually watching foul play. And wouldn't that be wonderful if she actually is? The state claims in its response that, quote unquote, Avery's contention that law enforcement consider pornography as evidence of motive is false. The hypocrisy of the state's argument is vividly illustrated by the fact that on March 10th, 2006, the state filed an amended information against Mr. Avery, adding the charge of sexual assault, among others. Detective Velli was asked to generate a report of Mr. Avery's computer. Based on Detective Velli's report, no apparent searches of pornographic and or sexual images were made, and no websites with apparent sexual and or pornographic images were, were accessed. The state argues that Bobby's searches did not reveal things closely mirroring the crime, contending, quote unquote, Avery fails to point to a single image or search for someone who was shot. The state is wrong. Mr. Avery did, in fact, provide this court with specific searches about, quote unquote, someone who was shot and searches for a, quote unquote, gun to head. The state completely ignores the evidence presented by Mr. Avery of the Dassey computer deletions, which infers consciousness of guilt. Significantly, many of the Dassey computer searches had been deleted, and only some of those were recovered, which leads to the question of who in the Dassey household deleted the searches, and why were those searches deleted before Mr. Avery's trial? Blood, body, bondage, bullet, cement, DNA, fire, gas, gun, handcuff, journal, rav, stab, throat, and tires. In its response, the state only refers to Detective Velli's word searches for news, body, journal, and cement. However, the state chooses these few cherry-picked words and ignores the rest to minimize the importance of the word searches. The state, in its response, incorrectly argues that McCrary does not have the credentials to opine as a police procedure expert. That no broadcaster wants to actually air these tapes. While at the FBI, Agent McCrary investigated violent crimes as a field agent for approximately 17 years, after which he was promoted to supervisory special agent and transferred to the FBI Academy in Quantico. The videotapes alert us to how viciously casual and eerily recreational was the manner in which these depravities were undertaken. McCrary has also worked or provided training for the international agencies, including Scotland Yard, the Cuerpo Nacional de Policia in Spain, French National Police, the Dutch National Police, the Metropolitan Toronto Police. And that's one reason why the thought that outside the courtroom any of this should be seen so horrifies us. Motive can manifest itself after the crime when the perpetrator is reliving and fantasizing about the crime. Everybody knows that about serial killers. It's a terrible verb to use in the circumstances, but they wanted to relive the moments. Joining us, the warrants filed today show investigators were looking at Avery's computer, checking for images of pornography and torture. This was a very dangerous subtype of rapist that was a very anger-based, perhaps even sadistic in nature. Uh, they're rare, but they're very, very dangerous. To look for images including pornography, bondage, torture, and death. And when she approached the car, she got in, and then he kidnapped her to abduct and murder young women. And they discovered a ton of books about sexual torture and violent porn. Anytime offenders come into contact with the police and they don't end up in handcuffs, they're emboldened. They also busted out a video camera and recorded the entire thing.
The state, in its response, completely ignores and or overlooks the expert opinion of Dr. Burgess, who provided expert deposition testimony in a Wisconsin premise liability sexual assault case. The state ignores Dr. Burgess's qualifications and publications. It's not easy butchering people. It's hard work. Physically and mentally, I don't think people realize you need to vent. You know, there's a lot more like me. What would these two guys talk about? Dr. Burgess has been qualified as an expert in the areas of child pornography, crime classification, offender typology, rape victims, rape trauma, and serial offenders. I'm very frightened. I mean, they were uh, very disturbing. There's no other way of, of putting it. And actually, there were some people that couldn't look at the crime scenes, and they were not invited back. So mm -hmm. it, that was a test that you had to, to really pass to be able to be part of their team that was going to be looking at profiling. And that made sense. That made sense. You certainly could not do profiling if you couldn't look at the pictures. At this juncture, the court must assume that Bobby was the primary user of the computer, as his brother Blaine has attested to in his affidavit. Also, Bobby has been caught in a blatant lie about the location of the computer. He told the police the computer was located in the living room, when the crime scene footage showed the computer was located in his bedroom. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the statistics are they only settle, uh, they only catch about 64% in mm -hmm. each state. Mm -hmm. Well, that adds up over and over and over. So that's why they have so many unsolved uh, cases or cold cases as they call them. Uh, contrary to the state's implication that Bobby being 18 years old makes him less likely to have committed the crime against Ms. Halbach, the Department of Justice has data stating that from 1980 to 2008, quote, approximately a third, three. 34% of murder victims and almost half of the offenders were under age 25. I think that the question is, well, well, how do they get into that state? What is it that gets them there? Is it just being in the, in the situation with the victim? Or sometimes it can be because of drugs mm -hmm. um, that can change a person's state of mind. Dr. Burgess notes in paragraph 15 of her affidavit, that not only did the examination of the DASI computer reveal significant searches for teenage child pornography, but also contains conversations between Bobby and 14 and 15 year old girls, which have explicit sexual content. According to Wisconsin statute 948-12, or uh, 12, each image of child pornography can be punished as a separate count of possession of child pornography and can be punished by up to 25 years per charge. Woo. Each image. That's very wow. important. See, to me, that's, very, right that's a very significant. And this is the reason I bitched and got so much is that, you know, after Bassbender uh, got the Billy CD, and he didn't ask, they didn't ask any real questions. Like, but it should have been a much stronger, say, look, we got some problems here with what we found on that computer, and we need some questions answered. They didn't do any of that. Nope. They should have opened a new case, for God's sake. Yeah, because any any to, crime involving a child, somebody yeah. liable. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, none of that, but it, it's a it's a must. Uh, you you can't just blow it off. Yes. Um, you you yes. must investigate. You yeah. So. Wouldn't that be the and FBI? I would have to assume that DCI has an IED department, um, and I think it would fall to them first to investigate why this this was not pursued by one of their own, you know, one of their own agents. A rare announcement from the state's top cop. He says the Department of Justice agents failed to follow up on tips about child pornography suspects. One of the tips involved a man later accused of sexual assault of a child. I'm not sure whether Mystic Jinx um, is aware of the article, but there was an issue regarding um, a lack of investigation by the Wisconsin um, uh, law enforcement officers on other cases involving uh, pornographic material on computers, a failure to act. Mm -hmm. And the question has to be asked, why did they do that? It has been known by, by everybody and their brother 
that this issue existed of of ignoring possible you know child sexual assault stuff but nobody has come out and said anything about it in terms of of law enforcement activity nor has anybody come in to investigate it this clearly is a way to obfuscate material that is potentially very very damaging to their star witness bobby dassey and they deep six that there's a crime sitting right in front of them and they're still refusing to look at it we also had to move forward when they retook that computer good point jack good point well, right they so they as far as i know we didn't kathleen has never been given the results of that second forensic search I yeah found not, that, not that we're aware of yeah no i don't think so Dr. Burgess wrote in her affidavit, quote unquote, it is not unusual for an organized offender to try to cover up his fantasies by deleting files from a computer. Now what should happen is you're gonna get a list of files on the computer, actually a list of files and folders. Bobby had human fingernail scratches on his back that he claimed were from his puppy. He lied about going hunting and passing Scott Toddick at 3 p.m. going east in his blazer when he was seen at 3.30 p.m. driving an unknown vehicle by his brother Blaine and a propane driver on the Avery property, which resembled Ms. Halbach's vehicle. Ms. Halbach's RAV4 was seen by witnesses parked at the turnaround in the direction Blaine saw Bobby driving. Nobody else saw them during this critical time period. They were on the property. They had access. They, one of them was directly contradicted by an independent witness. Dassey off from school. This man, John Lurkwin, saw a car like Teresa Hallbuck's on Halloween day. Did it look like it was going into the Avery Auto Salvage area or out of the Avery? It was leaving raising questions over who was in the SUV and why it was off the property. Special Prosecutor Ken Kratz thinks that couldn't be further from the truth. Kratz, who's been in charge of the investigation from the beginning, says there was no opportunity for anyone to plant or taint evidence. The vehicle, Ms. Halbach's vehicle, when found on the Avery residence, was um, basically left intact. Mr. Avery would challenge the credibility of Mr. Toddick and his timeline at an evidentiary hearing. Mr. Toddick would be impeached on a number of other issues at an evidentiary hearing, including but not limited to his entire timeline or his whereabouts on 103105 and his efforts to sell Bobby's 22 caliber rifle after the murder. Sometime around the time you talked to Investigator Dietering on the occasion you just described, were you trying to sell one of the Dassey boys 22s to a man named Jay Mathis at work? No. You weren't? This, you know, if they accept as true what Sawinski said, Bobby or whoever, he named Bobby, that needs to be resolved in a hearing. I don't know any other way you can say, they can just say, oh, well, it doesn't matter if, if Bobby was pushing her car. Uh, they, and they're just doing, uh, they're just saying, uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't mean he committed a crime. Well, that's, he had access to her vehicle. This is very potentially very damning because we have now a direct observation of Bobby Dassey and another individual uh, pushing the victim's vehicle up Avery Road on the morning of November the 5th. I totally well, agree. What does, it mean, what does it mean when you're like, oh, well, he pushed the car, but then they found absolutely no evidence of Bobby on or around the car? Well, on that proviso, why is Brendan Dassey in prison? Forensics has ruled him out, but he's in prison. Now, all Bobby Dassey had to do was just use a cleaning solution uh, and just wipe off his prints, uh, make sure that he didn't bleed inside the RAF 4, and that was it, right? So, or wear what's gloves. 
Yeah, or wear gloves. So what's good for one person is good for another. Keep in mind that um, on the spare tire cover, there were fingerprints smudges found. You can see them in the photos. That, that was, we show these a bunch of times. In the crime lab, you can see where that thing was handled. They didn't get looked any good prints off of it, but they were there. And the other, the other important thing, Bobby Dassey's a hunter, so he knows he knows how to skin and dismember a living mammal. And Thursday morning may have marked the only time this trial a witness will be questioned about roadkill. When did you get this deer? It was hit right up and off from our house. Right? All you do is you substitute a human being for a deer. It's going to be exactly the same process. Go ahead, Susan. I was just going to say, and if Budigan String had had the Bailey CD and the Sawinski <clears throat> evidence or the phone call, um, there could have been a very different outcome at trial. Absolutely. 100% agree with that. Yeah. Kathleen Zellner wants to face Teresa Hallbach's killer in court. Sexual assault was Bobby Dassey's motive, according to Kathleen Zellner. Uh, without question, Steve and Avery never used Bobby Dassey's computer. They're talking about that because of all the computer searches and things that were found on the computer. It's absolutely crazy. If you're not familiar with the case, go check it out. So hopefully three months, but it might be a little bit longer. Let's get going. Absolutely. Why is she starting up with Scott and Bobby again? Well, it's going wherever the, the evidence is going. <laughs> 